When you're doing real estate investing, a very important factor in you being successful or getting a really great or maximizing your return on investment is gonna be your vacancy. So we're just coming into this rental we, we purchased here in the Jefferson School uh, District. I've actually been here for the last hour. I've been putting in those things right there, those beautiful blinds. Believe it or not, I do hang my blinds myself because someone wants like 300 bucks for them and I'm too cheap and I can hang blinds, it's not a big deal. So, uh, but I wanted to, to talk to you about if you're doing investment property, something that you may not have considered um, doing and it's something we do on all of our properties and that is getting photography done and videos done at the beginning or as soon as you sign the, sign the contract before your first tenant moves in. So as an example, we close on this property today and I'm spending the day, of course I'm putting the blinds up, but the very next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a, a video tour of the property and then I'm gonna take photography of uh, the, the property. Now, th of course that makes sense to probably most of you and you're like, well yeah, you're gonna take pictures because you're gonna list it for rent, you're gonna need those pictures and those video. To be honest with you, I'm not taking pictures and videos for this property to rent it out because, well, honestly, this property is already rented out. What I am taking videos for, very detailed videos for, and pictures is for, is for the next tenant. When you're doing real estate investing, a very important factor in you being successful or getting a really great or maximizing your return on investment is gonna be your vacancy. Now your vacancy is basically the amount of time that your property is not being occupied. If you're gonna rent your property out and you're calculating your numbers, numbers and you're saying, I put X amount of dollars into it and I'm gonna get X amount of dollars in cash flow and I'm basing that off of you know, X amount of cash flow times 12, 12 months of rental, well, what happens if that property isn't rented for 12 months? What happens if you list that property, let's say on January 1, but you don't actually get filled till March 1? Um, well, that could be a big problem because the two months you actually had to pay the mortgage. The two months you probably had to take care of utilities. Maybe you had to take care of the lawn. Um, there are other things out there that you had to take care of. And what that means is your cash flow isn't necessarily just your mortgage minus the rent that you're getting it. It's the mortgage that you, you know, for the months that you didn't actually have rent coming in, total, and then subtract the, the, the income that you received total from the month, and what you'll realize is that if that house sits obviously vacant for you know, two months, something that could be very profitable can end up being pretty much a dud, not, not very profitable at all. So vacancy is very important, mainly when a tenant moves out on the 31st, you want a tenant moving in on, you're gonna hear this correctly, on the first. So how do you do that? Well, of course, you gotta secure that tenant before the other one moves out. And how do you do that? Well, that's what I just explained to you, having pictures and videos ahead of time. It's very similar to what we just did with this property. Now, we put a contract in this property about 45 days ago when the cabinets weren't even installed. And I actually did pictures and videos then. We listed uh, the property for rent. Uh, before it was uh, even under finished construction and before we even closed on the property. We had a tremendous outpouring of people that were interested and I would say it took us maybe about five hours to find a tenant for this particular property. Now that's great and it's new construction, but when this property, this tenant that we have signed a three-year lease, three years from now when this tenant moves out, the market could be completely different. Maybe this area isn't necessarily so hot and it's also not gonna be new construction, so it's gonna be a little less attractive for somebody. The point is, is if we know, say, the tenant's gonna move out on January 1, let's say, coming up, we can start listing that property for rent two months down the road. Now, we don't wanna disturb our tenants. We don't wanna to have to make them show the property all the time. Um, it's just not something that's gonna be very feasible. We don't do that to our tenants. But if I have great videos and I have great photography, believe it or not, there are a lot of tenants that are out there that would be willing to go and rent a property without actually seeing the property. And at the least intrusive, I can at least take great pictures, list the property for rent, post the video online, show it to somebody, find a great tenant that has seen the pictures, that has seen the video, maybe they've driven by the neighborhood, they walked around, they love everything. The only thing they haven't seen is they really just want to get into that property. 
We go, we run the background track, we do the application, we get everything lined up. And then what we do is then we'll knock on the door and we'll disturb our tenant. We'll say, hey tenant, you know, you're moving out. We have somebody that wants to rent that property. Would you do us a favor? Would you, would you show that particular potentially new tenant your home because they want to sign a lease? Um, and then we're doing that with maybe one person. You know, if that person backs out, maybe two, but we're not having five, six, seven, 10, 15 people disturbing a tent that's currently living there. So by securing really, really great pictures and really great photography and, and video is really kind of the key one. Now, during when this property is vacant, it actually sets up the opportunity for us to go and go ahead and list that property well before um, the tenant ever moves out. It allows us to secure a tenant well before the current tenant moves out. And if we have to do something, it allows us to only disrupt the tenant for a small amount. And what that means is I can have a tenant that literally moves out on the 31st. We require all of our tenants to do professionally clean the property. Even if they don't professionally clean, we can line up a professionally clean for the next day. So I can have a tenant move out on the 31st. I can professionally clean that the morning of the 1st, and I can literally hand the keys over to somebody that afternoon, and we do it all day long. So hopefully this video is, is, a, is a little bit um, of informative to you. If it is, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could smash the like button. Of course, you can hit the subscribe, hit the bell so you get our videos that we post. We try to post things that are of value to you. If you find value, I greatly appreciate it. If you have any things, if you're in the real estate industry and there's things that you do that uh, contribute to lowering the vacancy and making sure you squeeze out the max ROI, I'd love to see your comments be below. Of course, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave your comments below. Uh, we try to answer them as the best as we possibly can. We are busy throughout the day, but I still try to get there and respond to every comment um, again, if this stuff is useful, let us know. We'll continue to keep posting it. If not, if you'd like to see a video on something else, let us know and we'll go ahead and, and make sure we get it done for you. Thanks.